First, I want to say thank you to everybody in Scottsdale, Arizona. And you know who I'm talking to. I A lot of you say you listen to my podcast. So thank you very much for being there at my very first reading, my children's book with, the, uh, with Brave Books. It's Club Awesome Sauce. It's right here. Joining the amazing Club Awesome Sauce. I don't know if y'all can see that. Um, for those of you who are on uh, YouTube or Rumble, but this has been just such an amazing journey for me, um, putting this children's book together with Brave Books. I I really could not believe it that in the first week, right at the end of the first week, it became number one on Amazon, the number one children's book. So thank you out there, America, for uh, trusting me with uh, your children and this beautiful book that Brave Books and I put together about following the rules. But I want to talk a little bit first about Scottsdale. Scottsdale, Arizona, my, my brother lives in Arizona. I, I absolutely love it. It's such a beautiful community. It is gorgeous. I have a thing about the desert. I really do. I think maybe that's why I fell so much in love with Texas and with Hill Country, because I love the saguaro cactuses in Scottsdale, for example, in Arizona. They're, they're not here in Texas, believe it or not. A lot of kids draw the saguaro cactus because it's so cute and they put a sombrero on it and everything, but it does not exist here in Texas. The saguaro cactus only is in Arizona and it's endemic to that part of, of the world, really. I think that's the only place it grows. So I was there. It was nice. It wasn't too hot. It was just perfect. I think it was like in the 80s. Um, it was just, I was in old town, Scottsdale, a lot of cowboy restaurants and themes and wonderful other restaurants like, you know, Mexican restaurants and sushi restaurants. I thought that was interesting. Like a lot of sushi there. I'm like, I'm not sure if it gets really hot if I want to eat sushi, but that's okay <laughs> to each his own. Um, and then I get to the civic center, you know, getting ready for my book reading and I look out and I get there about an hour early and the line's already starting and the line's already starting. And I'm feeling a little nervous. You know why? Because the toughest crowd you can ever talk to are children. Bar none. Kids are the toughest. They do not mess around. They don't have any filters. They will not lie to you. They will let you know if they are bored and they will let you know if they don't like your story. So I got to it. I have to admit for all of you out there, and I'm going to go into that in detail in a minute, that I was a little nervous when I showed up and I was looking at this line and it was building and building. And I was like, oh, thank God. Maybe they're here just for Kirk Cameron <laughs> because, you know, growing, I, I saw a lot of moms there, a lot of moms, 80s. Saw a lot of moms in the crowd just waiting to get that picture with Kirk Cameron. But the kids were so excited. And Mark, uh, Sheriff Mark Lamb was there. As you know, he's running for Senate in Arizona. I'm so happy for him. Good for you, Sheriff Lamb. Mark, you're a friend, and I support you in this run all the way. I think you're going to make an amazing senator. Um, and he's there, but he's so cool looking. And I'll get into that, too, in a little bit. He's just a, just a tall man with a big cowboy hat and a lot of like, you know, paraphernalia. He's got like, and it's not drug paraphernalia, folks. It's like his cop stuff. You know, he's got his vest on, his sheriff's badge, um, his guns. You know, he's just looking cool. All the kids like him, right? He's law and order. And then there's me. So I'm like in the middle of Sheriff Mark Lamb, Kirk Cameron, and, and me. <laughs> so, and we're getting ready to read our stories, our children's books, to all of these kids. And there were about roughly 1,000 people there, between 700 and 1,000 people. And it was awesome. Wait until I get back. But first, I want to tell you about Allegiance Gold. Gold and silver allow you to protect what you have worked so hard for and give you back the control and privacy that you need. Why? Because we know now that nothing is private right? And that the government can go into your bank accounts and look at what you're doing. And by the way, the banks can just say, guess what? We don't like your, uh, your ideology. Uh, you're way too Christian for us. We're going to like kick you out. Um, you don't believe in transgenderism and all this other stuff. So we're going to, we're going to remove you. Um, and we saw what happened in Canada, right? We saw what happened in Canada when the truckers stood up 
and said, my body, my choice. I do not want to get a vaccine that has not been, you know, thoroughly tested. That's what they said. And what did the government do? They seized their bank accounts and anybody who donated to their cause. That is some really scary stuff. But my friends at Allegiance Gold can help you protect your money. They can help you protect your IRA, your 401k with physical gold and silver and have it delivered securely right to your door. They'll educate you on the benefits of physical gold. Why? Because they care and they want to build a long-term relationship with you. Allegiance Gold has the highest ratings in the industry. Listen to this. Five stars with TrustLink, a triple A rated with the Business Consumer Alliance, and they've got an A plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. Get $5,000 now of free silver on a qualifying purchase when you tell them that Sarah sent you. When you tell them that Sarah sent you. So don't wait. Call or click today, 877-702-7272. That's 877-702-SARAH, S-A-R-A, no H, or go to protectwithsarah.com. We can't control the Biden administration, but we can prepare. 877-702-7272. That's 877-702-SARAH or protectwithsarah.com. So first, I want to say how nice it was to have some time to talk to Kurt Cameron. Um, and I'm sure all of you remember him from Growing Pains. Uh, but, to, but to talk to him, to meet some of his family, um, to see uh, Sheriff Mark Lamb, to see his wife, all here at this event as we, you know, got shuffled into the Civic Center Library. And uh, we were sitting in the back and I was hand signing my books. And I realized, wow, I should have practiced because my signature, there was a lot to be said for that signature. At least the first eight books that I signed, it's going to be an issue. People are going to be like, what is, is this is not really... Uh, Sarah Carter's signature. I just haven't done it in a long time. I, I don't normally do that um, unless someone asks, you know, or something. And I, there's only been like two people that have asked me. <laughs> just, just kidding. Um, but I, I was in there signing and right next to me is Sheriff Mark Lamb, you know, from Arizona. And you all probably know him. He is very, very popular sheriff, probably one of America's most popular sheriffs. And he's sitting there and he's got this signature thing going. He is like, Sheriff Mark Lamb, Sheriff Mark Lamb. I mean, I was like, and it was beautiful. And I was like, what? I go, I should have brought a stamp or something because I could not keep up. I was, I was signing and signing these books. And then I look over to my, you know, over to my left and, and there's Sheriff Lamb. He's got like a hundred books already. And I've got like 10, like right there. I'm just like, you know what? Just like me to take forever on my signature. So, but because I had to keep doing it. It got faster as time went on. And I was able to stay, you know, we were sitting back there and uh, Kirk Cameron and, and I and the sheriff, and we're talking about the state of our country and what has been happening to our children. And it's just so tragic. I know you are out there maybe feeling the exact same way I feel. You know, my youngest is 10 years old and we have a high school, uh, you know, high school aged uh, son, uh, my stepson, and I, and the other ones are all older now. And I watch what is going on with my, you know, my youngest and, and Luke, who's in high school. And I say to myself, you know, this is a tough world to grow up in. Not only are they dealing with, you know, all of this social media and the pressures that come with that, which is just crazy. That's why I, I, I have banned TikTok and my daughter's Instagram is only private for the family. Only private. She can do all the silly videos she wants for the family. I do not want her on public media. And mainly just on mine. Like sometimes I'll post fun things with the family and I don't mind that. I like that. I, I feel like you share your lives. I want to share a little bit of my life too. But I don't want my daughter, you know, surfing the internet at the age of 10 and predators all around. But now we don't even have to worry about just the predators hiding in the bushes or lurking in the darkness. Now the predators are right in our face. They're on Disney Channel. They're in their bedrooms on the laptop. They're tricking them on YouTube. They're teaching them just bizarre fiction about their gender. It's child abuse. 
You know, and I, I talk about this on the show quite often because it's just that important. We cannot have a nation that is healthy and prosperous if our children are not healthy and prospering, if our families are not healthy and prospering. And that's why I did this book with Brave Books. I really did. It's like I begged them. It's like I, they didn't even have to come to me. I was like going to them because I was just saying, you guys are doing something so miraculous. You're putting together books, which seems kind of crazy because, you know, when my dad was young, when my mom was young, I mean, those books were about virtue. It was about teaching lessons. It was about teaching morals or protecting children, teaching them lessons that would protect them. Granted, some of the stories were pretty scary, like Hansel and Gretel. And that was pretty scary to me, you know, a witch that wanted to eat them. But, you know, it kept me from going into the forest, right? This book is nothing like that. It's not scary. It's uh, joining the amazing Club Awesome Sauce. And what is Club Awesome Sauce? It's America. It's American. It's our families. And it's all the people who have come to this great nation because of its basic principles, because of the values that are instilled in our nation, and more importantly, liberty and freedom. And all over the world, wherever I've traveled, whether that's Afghanistan or when I lived in Saudi Arabia, or whether I've traveled to Pakistan or even in other countries where, where there's corruption and poverty, um, it's tough. It's tough to see what some children have to endure. And it's, it's gut-wrenching, actually. Uh, my counselor says that it's uh, definitely PTSD when you see that over and over and over again. You know, um, and it's, for me, for me doing this book and talking about why rules matter is important. Because it's a way of teaching children about the border, about a very tough subject, right? A subject that we don't want to talk to our kids about because we shouldn't. They shouldn't have to be afraid that, you know, that there are children in the world being sex trafficked or that their organs are being sold on the black market in the dark web, right? Or that, you know, there are cartels that are utilizing uh, migrants to benefit themselves by funneling drugs into our country that are killing our own children. Our young children should not be inundated with these things, but what they should be inundated with, what they should know about is morals and values. They should understand that those basic lessons in life that will protect them, that will make them happy, that will make them respect you as a parent, and that will give them strength to be able to stand on their own two feet. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But first, I want to tell you about fast-growing trees. Why? Okay, because listen to this. You can get plants online. You don't have to go to a garden center if you don't want to. You can actually have somebody online at fast-growing trees, fastgrowingtrees.com, be your personal garden expert. They will tell you exactly what you need to grow in your garden. They will tell you exactly what plants grow in your region of the country. And then you will be able to order those plants, order those trees. They will be delivered to your door. You will have a 60-day money-back guarantee on those plants. Think about that. And you'll get to go outside with your families. You could go outside with your family, read a book in the summer, have a little picnic in your backyard, and then plant and do some gardening. And in fact, I love gardening and I tell you this all the time, but I'm going to start posting it on Instagram. I'm going to start posting some videos. Um, I have been planting with my daughter, Annalise, since she was a baby, since she could sit up and walk. And even when she couldn't, I'd sit her outside and let her play in the soil and let her dig, you know, the little holes with me and put the little flowers in. And I'm going to do that with you because being outdoors and spending some time with your family is the best thing that you can do, especially in this crazy day and age. And as I'm talking to you about why we did the book, why bravebooks.com is now my family, why I believe in the mission that they have, um, I'm going to tell you why I believe fast-growing trees can benefit your family. Because it takes your kids away from the television. It takes your kids out of the phone. It takes your kids out of the laptop, where you can sit with them, talk with them, 
grow something with them and watch it grow and watch it become something beautiful. So right now you can join over 1.5 million happy fast growing tree customers. Go to fastgrowingtrees.com backslash Carter, that's C-A-R-T-E-R now and get, listen to this, 15% off your entire order. Get 15% off at fastgrowingtrees.com backslash Carter. That's fastgrowingtrees.com backslash Carter. Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. If you love children's books, if you want to talk about the best things that we could do as parents to raise our kids, follow me, download the podcast, click right here on YouTube and Rumble. So I'm pretty excited um, that not only is this book now a number one bestseller, um, I'm so excited about that um, on Amazon and and that families are contacting me and telling me how much they love the book. Uh, but I'm excited that I feel like this is the beginning of something really new for me, right? Have you ever felt like a moment in your life where you're just, it's tough. I don't have a lot of time, right? I don't have a lot of time. Um, and one of the things I've always wanted to do was write a book. And I love children. And my husband always says, you know, I spend a lot of time telling my kids bedtime stories. And, um, and there's a lot of stories that I've just made up that I just, that stay in the family, you know, kind of like from the time our oldest was youngest and, and so on and so forth. And, and through the ages and like Captain Knight and his pirate ship or, you know, the incredible tiger of Vietnam or like all these little stories, the magical lunchbox. I came up with that story when I was little, but now I'm part of this brave family and connecting with this brave family, um, by the way. They are, they are the brains behind the magic and everything with this book. Um, but being a part of that brave family is like opening another door in my life, like another challenge saying, hey, you know what? Let's write that book. Let's write that big book, you know, for the grownups too. And let's share these stories that I've, I feel like I live a lot of lifetimes. Let's share those stories with others. And it's kind of hard. Even writing Club Awesome Sauce, when we were coming up with the characters, the Brave Book family and I, uh, we were coming up with these characters. Um, I named one of the uh, characters in this book, Anna, and I want to show you a picture of Anna, because sometimes she does look like this. Sometimes she does look like this. Sad and bummed out because she has a lot of chores to do. And this is Kenny, her dad. So I named Anna after our youngest, Annalise, and Kenny was named after um, my husband's first guide dog. Uh, Kenny was the most amazing black lab in the world. And he was just a part of our family. We loved him so much. Um, and he passed away uh, after he retired. He passed away, that big old lug, that snuggly bear that we loved so much. And I wanted a way to keep him alive for us and for our family in this book. And so um, brave on Freedom Island. Uh, he is now a character and he will live on that wonderful, beautiful guide dog that was uh, my husband's eyes uh, and helped him adjust to a world of darkness um, by being his best friend. So this is this is kind of like very dear to my heart. It's a book that I really love. It's not something I'm trying to sell. And any in fact, anytime, anytime. I talk to you all. It's because I truly do believe in what what the what the family, Brave Family does and what we as the Sarah Carter show and my team, my great team at Radio America uh believe. We want to get an opportunity to be with you, the American people, to talk with you, to tell you the truth, to bring you these amazing interviews, like we just had Devin Nunes on, we've spoken with, uh, you know, Senator Marsha Blackburn about the truth. We've had Luis Elizondo on the show multiple times uh, talking about the Pentagon and UFOs and all these great people and stories. And we've had you, the American people, who are telling me your stories through your emails and through your responses on Twitter and YouTube and Rumble. Um, I love reading them because I believe we are just one big family, right? And we have to be there for each other. But this book, it's like a chapter in my life. And I know you've probably felt that before too. You get to a point in your life and you try something new and all of a sudden a door opens and God kind of 
guides you and you follow that guidance and something spectacular you never expected comes comes around the corner. And, you know, you just got to take that chance, right? Believe me, I go through the same mental, I guess, mental, not, I wouldn't say it's confusion, but the same mental challenges, you know, right? Whether I'm going to do that, am I going to have enough time for that? You know, I'm scared. Am I going to be successful at that? That anybody else goes through. We all go through that. You know, we all do. We all do. Um, am I, am I doing enough as a mother? Am I doing enough as an employee? Did I get that story right? You know, I'm sweating at night, you know, wondering, especially when I was a young journalist. And can I write that book? And I did, and I did it, and it's, it's great. And I know it's making a difference in people's lives. And I think that's what I wanted to, to, to tell you about, is to not be afraid, to try something new, to challenge yourself into doing things that maybe you would have not done before, right? And and taking that risk because that's all life is. It's just it's just an amazing one chapter after another. It's a book. It's a book and with God's guidance and with moral values in place and teaching those to your children, I believe you can do almost anything. Anything, really. Anything. We just have to be willing enough to do that. We have to have enough faith to believe that it's possible. And sometimes things don't always turn out the way that we want. Believe me, I have been through it more than you can even imagine, more than you can know. I'm sure some of you out there have been through a lot too. And you think, oh, it's never going to get better. This is tough. I'm, I'm never going to get out of this hole. And guess what? God finds a way, he lifts you up, you get out of that rut, right? And you move forward. And then he opens another door, a door that you never expected. I want you to really believe that. And I'm so grateful that you're a part of my family now, a part of this beautiful nation. And that's what we've got to do, folks. We've got to take control back. We've got to put things in front, books in front of our children and situations in front of our children that will make them whole, healthy, and happy. We've got to do that for our families. We've got to do that for our nation. And I want you to go to bravebooks.com or bravebooks.us. I want you to be a part of the Brave Books family with your children. Um, I'm actually going to do something really cool. Uh, and I, I may end up doing it uh, for a podcast. I don't know. I have to ask them first, but there was a family there. And the, before I wrap up, there was a woman there with her two daughters and I had met them when they were standing in line. And when we first went on stage, we had to break up because there were so many people, we had to break it up into two parts. So Kirk Cameron, um, because he was leading this, uh, you know, this brave books event, uh, he read his story with, with the sheriff, with Sheriff Mark Lamb first. And then I did it for the second group with Kirk Cameron. So at the end of the second, uh, at the end of the first group, some of the kids that I had met in line were so sad because I didn't read my book to them. And so these two little girls came up to me and uh, they were with their mom and they just looked like they were going to cry. It was so, it was so sweet. I didn't even realize that they really wanted to hear me read the book as much as they heard the others. And I saw the tears in their eye. I signed over a book that I had for one of them. And then she said, yeah, they're just really bummed out that they didn't get to hear you read it. And I said, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do, um, I will do it with you on camera. Like I, like we'll FaceTime each other and I'll sit with your daughters. I'll bring my daughter and I'll sit with your daughters and I'll read them the book privately, you know, when I get back home. Well, I still need to do that. So I'm going to make that happen. But we'll see what we can do. Maybe we can get other, other families to join online. I think that would be a lot of fun. But I'm definitely going to read the book to the two little girls. I won't mention their name or their mom's name because I don't have permission to do that. Uh, but I will be reading to them privately, joining the amazing club, Awesome Sauce. America is awesome, folks. It's worth protecting. It's worth keeping. We have rules for a reason to not only protect our children in our country, but to protect the children that are being trafficked 
into our country. We need it to stop. We need to protect them. We need to follow the rules and we need to find a better way. God bless you. God bless our great nation and God bless the great state of Texas. And by the way, don't forget to follow me on Truth at Sarah Carter Official on Twitter at Sarah Carter DC and on Instagram at S Carter DC. See you on the flip side.